This yes, conference sir. will now be recorded. Yes, sir. Audible. Okay, okay. Good morning, all. So, I think today is the last topic for your year. By completing this topic, uh, the year topics will be completed. Um, so, I hope you have all the notes, means you might have written notes or you might have note, taken down the topics which have been covered. Um, kindly, if anyone of you has it, please, uh, if you have a book, Tingra or some Hazarika book, kindly make a note of it. Uh, if any topic is left out, please let us uh, know. By, tomorrow, by today evening or tomorrow, if you let us know, then next week we'll cover those topics. And uh, if, if everything is covered, then we will start the revision. Since so we'll take up the first surgeries, surgical topics once, then most probably by November, we can start a revision. Or else if you want some topics to be repeated, you can just tell us now. So um, those who have uh, all the topics, if, if anyone has noted down, please once check your notes and your textbooks if any topic is left out please let us know so that we can cover it in the next week and we can start the surgical part and later on in the from at least november at in december if at all you're not being called here then we have to start your revision so that if uh, as as such there is no postponement of any exams the exams will go as per schedule so you have to write your exams in jan i think uh, jan or february so definitely you, you need to be ready for that Okay, so if I'm audible, then I'm, I'll start this class today. The last topic of year, tinnitus. So what is tinnitus? It is one of the complaint, uh, ear complaint. As we say, I already discussed once uh, that uh, there are some cardinal symptoms, right? For all the patients who come with ear complaints. They'll come with discharge, they'll come with uh, ear pain, they'll come with hearing loss, and sometimes they come with tinnitus and what I go, right? So tinnitus is one of the um, is one of the complaints, chief complaints of some of the patients. So it is it stands, tinnitus stands for the perception of the sound, might be ringing or noise, which has no external stimulus. Like um, there should be some external stimulus, right? Now I'm speaking. Or else, uh, if, if an object is there, uh, like a tuning fork, if you vibrate it, then a sound comes. So there should be some external stimulus. But when there is no external stimulus, and still the patient is perceiving some kind of sound, that is known as tinnitus. So tinnitus stands for the perception of sound, which might be ringing or noise type or buzzing type or hissing type, anything. It's the abnormal perception of the sound, which has no external stimulus. You need to remember that when you write that there is no external stimulus that will uh, correlate with tinnitus when if there is some external stimulus then definitely there is uh, no point uh, discussing that as tinnitus so it may be buzzing type ringing type clicking type or escaping of steam like hissing from a pressure cooker whatever so some ab uh, abnormal perception of the sound with no external stimulus is uh, defined as tinnitus and usually it is unilateral but may also affect both ears if it is affecting both the ears and it's very troublesome for them but generally it is unilateral in nature and tinnitus is more annoying in quiet sound surroundings particularly at night when the masking effect of the ambient noise from the air environment is lost generally the when the patients come to you telling that i'm hearing about i'm able to hear some ringing sound continuously then you need to ask them whether it is generally more in the nights when the surrounding climate is very silent when they are in the bedroom sleeping then they hear the sound more because generally what happens is when you are in traffic or when you're in the morning with all the sounds surrounding environment like uh, the honking of the uh, so when you have an um, uh, you you have a lot of distractions in the morning okay so you have a lot of sound the fan sounds are there or the surrounding vehicle sounds industrial sounds whatever so much of sounds will be there 
so in that sound you might uh, that patient might not be able to perceive this sound but once when it is surrounded by a calm environment then he might definitely observe that that sound so it is generally uh, more particularly at night when the masking effect of the ambient noises from the environment is lost so i hope this is kind of clear there are, there are various classifications but uh, the most commonly de uh, described is uh, this one they have two types of um, one is subjective type and this objective type and uh, some sometimes we also describe it as pulsatile tinnitus or non pulsatile tinnitus and there are some other type uh, but generally in most of the textbooks and most of the literature we discuss we describe the tinnitus as two that is subjective and objective so subjective tinnitus is the one which is heard by the patient himself while objective tinnitus may be heard by examiner if amplified sufficiently see when the patient comes to you and says hey, uh, he is having the ringing sensation of the ear of a left ear and you are not able to hear it means the examiner is not able to hear it only the patient is only the subject uh, he hears the sound but sometimes what happens is due to some various reasons the sound which is heard by the patient can also be perceived by the um, examiner when amplified you need to amplify that sound so that means uh, how how can you amplify it? you can uh, use the bell of a stethoscope to hear that I'll uh, describe some of the causes which uh, which are generally objective in nature. So it is two types: subjective is the one when only the patient is able to hear; objective is when it is uh, if amplified significantly, the examiner can also experience the same sound which the patient is having. Okay. So it's, these are um, um, this is the sagittal section of a ear. Through which uh, we can uh, try to understand what are the various causes. Okay, so um, first we'll start with the external ear. So external ear, 4A, that is, is the wax or some cerumen. When the external ear is blocked, you that pay, some patients might uh, perceive it as tinnitus. And uh, this is this is only one, one only one condition of the external ear. But then, uh, as you know, this is the tympanic membrane. This is the whole the middle ear. This is the external ear. Okay, so this is the external ear, and the this is the middle ear. The red one, the red colored shade is the uh, middle ear, and this uh, semi uh, semicircular canal is called the inner ear, and this is the auditory nerve. Okay, so the external ear condition is wax or cerumen impacted wax that will cause. Then coming to the conditions of the middle ear. Middle ear, uh, you can see that uh, one of the condition is 5B, that is glomus jugular. When uh, at the bar, this is the glomus uh, jugular bulb, this is the jugular bulb area which forms the floor of the middle ear. If you have a tumor, so that can cause that can also cause you uh, a, a abnormal perception of the sound. Okay. And uh, you know, this is 6A, which is muscular contraction of the stapedius. When, the, when there is uh, abnormal contraction of the stapedius muscle, then uh, then also the patient might hear abnormal perception of, perception of noise. Okay, and some more conditions like um, serious otitis media, that is 4B. Where is 4B? This is 4B. So when the whole middle ear is filled with some sera, some secretions, and there is no proper movement of the tympanic membrane, that can also be perceived as a tinnitus and a proper sensation. So serous otitis media is also a condition of the middle ear which can cause tinnitus. Then uh, mostly most of the conditions related are generally uh, inner ear, and there is one more 4C where it is 4C. This one is a 4C. Okay, 4C is at the area of or the um, foot plate due to the stapedial otosclerosis. Okay, so 4A is an external ear one. 4B serous otitis is a middle ear condition. Um, then 5B, which is um, glomus jugular, and 5C, sorry 4C, that is um, stapedial otosclerosis. Then uh, recently we have discussed on Meniere's disease. That is the cause of the Meniere uh, inner ear, right? So in a, in the Meniere's disease we had four symptoms: uh, spontaneous uh, 
the current vertigo, tinnitus, oral fullness, and sensorineural hearing loss. So tinnitus is also one of the feature of Meniere's disease. So Meniere's disease can also cause uh, it's a condition of inner ear which causes tinnitus. So Meniere's disease, acoustic trauma, some trauma to the inner ear, labyrinth, will definitely cause uh, tinnitus. Acoustic neuroma. This is 3A. When there is some tumor at the vestibular seventh and eighth nerve, then that will, that will also cause tinnitus. 3B central causes. When there is some uh, problem at the cortex of the cerebral, then that will also the auditory pathway. There is some problem at the auditory pathway that will also perceived as a generally as a tinnitus, abnormal perception of the sound. Impacted wax, serious otitis media, repetitive otosclerosis. Cochlear otosclerosis. If you have a cochlear otosclerosis, then also it might perceive uh, as a, an abnormal sound. Glomus muscular, muscular contraction. Glomus tympanicum, which is 6B. Glomus tympanicum, okay. So, glomus tympanicum will also sometimes cause that uh, tinnitus, uh, atherosclerosis. This AV malformations are uh, 7B. Where is 7B? Here. Some AV, AV mal, this is the sigmoid sinus. Okay, so when you have some problem at the sigmoid sinus level, and 7A is atherosclerosis, so these are uh, conditions of uh, related to the blood vessels. So these blood vessels, when they have some problem, that is known as um, that, um, that can also be perceived as abnormal perception of sound. And these are some of the objective causes when you keep a uh, bell of the stethoscope at the sigmoid sinus area at the mastoid uh, at the occipital area you might hear some sound when you are so you need to amplify it right so these are some of the uh, atherosclerosis glomus uh, tympanicum glomus gicler uh, av malformations these are some of the uh, conditions where you can hear so these are the examples of objective tinnitus whereas uh, all the other are all the other conditions are subjective but uh, the conditions like atherosclerosis, AV malformations, glomus jugular, glomus tympanicum, all these are subjective type of, uh, objective type of tinnitus, where the examiner can also hear with some proper amplification. So we will just uh, rush it up now. Uh, only these are the causes. Number one is due to the changes in the cochlear hair cells of the basal turn, which may be like escaping of steam or like ringing of the bells. They may be caused by noise trauma, means when um, paratrauma, like, means when abnormal loud sounds, when you go near a, a big loudspeaker, due to that, uh, there is some pressure difference and uh, there is some trauma to the um, middle ear or the inner ear. So that will also cause them tinnitus. Press by QCIS, that is sense neural hearing loss as age related, mostly uh, in the fifth and sixth decades, the old people will have definitely uh, some sensory hearing loss that will cause them tinnitus. Toxic changes like uh, because of some drugs like salicylates, quinine, streptomycin, neomycin, ibuprofen, imipramine, and heavy metals. So these are some of the toxic causes which can also cause tinnitus. Head injury causing labyrinth and concussion. Ischemia caused by hypertension or exosclerosis or vasomotor. So ischemia causes can also cause tinnitus. Number two is physical distortion of the cochlea, which may be due to Meniere's disease, endocrine disturbances such as hypothyroidism, diabetes, and premenstrual tension. So all these conditions, when there is a physical distortion of the cochlea, that can also rise as cochlear or um, cochlear tinnitus, uh, cause tinnitus, and it gives rise to roaring, humming, and bell-like low-pitched tinnitus. Disorders of CNS. In this type, other effects of CNS disease are also present, which is generally high pitched tinnitus. So, when there is a physical distortion of cochlea, they, that is a low pitched tinnitus. But when the conditions are related to CNS, when the cause is CNS, then generally it is a high pitched tinnitus. The causes may be CP angle tumors like uh, acoustic neuromine or and cerebral atherosclerosis, uh, as in old, old age. So, these are generally high pitched tinnitus. Number four, due to the change in the sound conduction. Like due to impacted sediment, foreign body retracia, say secretory otitis media, autosclerotic focus. So all these are the causes. How they cost in it is due to the change uh, changes in the sound conduction. So you need to remember this. Okay, the one is due to due to the changes in the cochlear hair cells. These are the causes. Now it's trauma, press by this is toxic causes, head, uh, head injury, ischemia, physical distortion, like in meniere's and endocrine disturbances. They are low pitched. Disorders of CNS, they are generally high pitched, CP angle, and uh, cerebral, cerebral atherosclerosis. Due to the change in the sound conduction, impacted sediment, foreign body, atresia, secretory otitis media, and otosclerosis, these are, these are the conditions. 
and number six is muscular contraction of the tensor tympani or the stapedius muscle so these are also these can also cause number five vascular causes produce pulsatile tinnitus i was telling you some conditions like av malformations and all right so due to the uh, carotid body tumors glomus tumors glomus jugular glomus tympanicum uh, otosclerosis severe anemia so all these are generally causes um, uh, of sub objective tinnitus objective tinnitus where the examiner can also hear due to significant amplification some psychogenic causes will definitely cause tinnitus and they are like depression anxiety middle ear tinnitus is, uh, tinnitus is low pitched while cochlear tinnitus is high pitched so uh, the important points to be remembered are middle ear tinnitus when the, it is due to secretory otitis media or otosclerosis like that then definitely it's a low pitched one but when the inner area the, when the cochlear hair cells or the inner ear labyrinth these are involved then are uh, cause then they are high pitched pulsatile tinnitus is seen in asom barotrauma and glomus tumors and tinnitus synchronous with respiration is seen in patellar eustachian tube when the eustachian tube is patellar means the uh, eustachian tube gets opened up and closed due to the action of tensor villa palatini and the levator villa palatini muscles but if they are lax and uh, when when we are uh, breathing and inspiring and expiring if that uh, muscle contraction is not that taut means uh, if it's very lax then um, the patellar eustachian tube also will uh, open and shut open and shut during the inspiration and expiration so that will also uh, cause some abnormal means that uh, escape of the uh, air escape, uh, escape of air towards the uh, middle ear so that can also cause some tinnitus so middle ear tinnitus is low pitched while cochlear tinnitus is high pitched pulsatile tinnitus is seen in asom barotrauma and uh, glomus tumor and tinnitus synchronous with respiration is seen in patellar eustachian tube so we have uh, categorized the causes into seven so the first one was due to the change in the cochlear hair cells the second one was physical distortion of the hair cells of the cochlea the third one was cns conditions the fourth one the fourth one was change in due to changes in the sound conduction the fifth one was due to the vascular causes sixth as muscular contractions and seventh is psychogenic causes so these are some of the causes which can cause tinnitus so this is how the generally due to the, due to the psychogenic causes means uh, the patient will be under stress and he will be fatigued means uh, the due to the fatigue uh, as the patient is in stress he will feel a lot uh, weak and fatigued that will cause some depression and then the patient will have tinnitus feeling but but it's a circle actually sometimes the patient will start having a, means the feeling of tinnitus that will cause a lot of stress to him that will uh, lead to fatigue and then depression it can start with depression that might uh, so present as feeling of the tinnitus then stress then fatigue so everything is a circle 360 degree circle where the symptoms can start at any point but the ultimately the patient will have all these things the stress fatigue depression and feeling of the tinnitus so this due to the anxiety and the depression the patient might have you know, feeling of the tinnitus abnormal perception of the sound without any external stimulus so what are the causes of objective tinnitus patellar eustachian tube which may follow rapid weight loss or section of the nerve or an excessive scarring of the palate or also stenosis or aneurysm of the carotid artery or its branches can cause tinnitus synchronous with pulse palatal myoclonus glomus jugular venous hum av malformations so these are all the causes of objective tinnitus you need to remember them because sometimes these uh, this can be asked as a two marks question just what are the describe what are the causes of objective tinnitus only five or six you need to mention so you have to remember this as such it's uh, the tinnitus has been described since long ages but uh, still the pathology the etiology, I mean, the etiology has been uh, described well but uh, still we are not very clear about the pathology how, how does the patient will feel this I mean, what is the reason behind uh, this tinnitus so the exact etiology and pathophysiology of non pulsatile subjective tinnitus are poorly understood well look, objective when pulsatile objective tinnitus we are uh, we know that due to some av malformation due to the glomus jugular the patient is having it so we are able to categorize it but 
pathophysiology of a non-pulsatile subjective tinnitus, which only the patient is able to hear. We are still not clear how does he hear. So, pathophysiology of a non-pulsatile subjective tinnitus, which only the patient is able to hear. We are still not clear how does he hear. So, pathophysiology of a non-pulsatile subjective tinnitus, which only the patient is able to hear. We are still not clear how does he hear. Whether the tinnitus is generated by cochlea or due to the cochlear nerve or CNS, it is not known. And the current evidence suggests that it is generated in the CNS. But generally, this abnormal perception of sound is uh, it's a sensory thing, right? So sensory things are carried out by nerves. So most likely, it is due to the some disorder of the central nervous system, which uh, which might be the cause of the tinnitus, is presumed. There are two factors generally suggested. One is deprivation of the input or abnormal input from the ear. It can be either way. Okay, so that ear uh, means um, it can be from the ear towards the CNS or um, like um, deprivation of the input means there is no input from the CNS, but then um, the patient is hearing it, or else there abnormal input from the ear. Maybe some. Uh, Stimulus has been given by the ear, which uh, generally is not given, uh, is not there, and that is perceived by the CNS as an abnormal sound. So one is deprivation of the input, means there is no input from the brain. One is from the peripheral, that is abnormal input from the ear. So these are suggested. Neuronal plasticity and changes in the neuronal input may result to follow structural and or functional changes. Changes in the nuclei of the ascending auditory pathways or redirection of the auditory input to extra auditory pathways. So these are all uh, presumed. Uh, there is no way proved that these are the causes. Uh, this is the pathophysiology there due to which the patient is hearing the tinnitus. But these are presumed. So the two factors are deprivation of the input and the abnormal input from the ear. And due to the neuronal plasticity and changes in the neuronal input. May result uh, structural or the functional changes. So, what are the changes? The changes they can be a change in the nuclei of the ascending auditory pathways, and they can also be redirection of the auditory input to the extra auditory pathways. Okay. So, remember this. So, if you are if you are asked for about the pathology, pathophysiology of the tinnitus, you need to write neuronal plasticity and changes in the neuronal input. That can be changes in the nuclei of the ascending auditory pathways or. Um, Redirection of the auditory input it can be either way. How do you investigate? You investigate. The patient comes to you and you take a detailed history. Well, how? Means how does it start? When do you have? When do you experience it more? What times it is disturbing you? You also prepare a questionnaire to him and you give it to him to answer. Whether uh, at doing what kind of activities the patient is able to hear it more, where to describe it, and uh, to know the severity of the tinnitus. So they are given some questions, and uh, they have to uh, mark uh, mark it like uh, they, uh, there will be a scale provided zero to ten. Zero is uh, like very not very much uh, troublesome, and ten will be like it is very troublesome. So there are some scoring tinnitus uh, scores will be there, and they have to answer it. Based based on that, if uh, it is not troublesome to the patient, then we can manage him accordingly. If it is a uh, very problematic to him, then we have to think in the ways in how to manage these cases. Okay, so detailed history along with general and ENT examination is very important for any patient coming with tinnitus complaint. Then you have to have a complete hemogram, fasting blood sugar, or lipid profile, serological resources to to know the other general causes which can cause tinnitus. You do not be able to evaluate whether the patient is having is uh, having any sensory neural hearing loss. We do a pure audiometry, impedance audiometry to know whether the patient is suffering with ASOM or any uh, secretory otitis media, serous otitis media. Vestibular examinations to rule out any labyrinthitis uh, features if the patient has any labyrinth um, labyrinthine trauma or due to some. Like that. So to evaluate all those things, we do pure audiometry, impedance audiometry, and vestibular examination. Speech discrimination score and speech deception threshold are also done to evaluate to know whether there is any sense neural hearing loss or any cochlear hearing loss is there or not. We also do a tinnitus matching electronistagmography and computer tomography see a scan of the CP angle. So if there is an acoustic neuroma, then you have to rule out right. So all these are done. You have to take a detailed history. You do a routine uh, blood investigations. You do a pure audiometry or impedance or a vestibular examination. 
speech discrimination score and speech deception threshold are tested in it is matching electronic tomography and computer tomography scan of CPN. What are the radiological imaging and their indications? We sometimes when we are uh, suspecting some objective type of tinnitus, we do a carotid ultrasound, vascular pulse tinnitus in either osteotic disease to rule out. CECT is done so that vascular such as paraganglioma or aberrant uh, carotid or persistent septal artery. So uh, to know all these things, we do. We also go for a CECT. MRI is done to rule out myoclonus or to evaluate multiple sclerosis because that is also a um, cause of pulsatile object tinnitus, right? Get alone in, uh, enhanced MRI due to um, some say, uh, CP angle tumors or uh, SNHL due to some internal uh, internal acoustic meters. If there is tumors related to that, then we have we also do a get alone in, uh, enhanced MRI. MRA and MRB are done to know the vascular abnormalities during dural in, in AVFs and conventional angiography is done to uh, observe presence of Gruy in case of normal CT or MRA. If, the, if, the, if you have done CT and MRA, everything is normal, then you also go for a conventional angiography to know some atherosclerosis in the, the large vessels. So these are the, some of the radiological imaging and the indications. And the last part is three and treatment. The patient has come to you, you have detailedly taken the history and you have done all the investigations and now you know that whether the patient has an, uh, is a pulsatile tinnitus or non-pulsatile tinnitus or a subjective tinnitus or objective tinnitus. So if, it, if it is due to an objective tinnitus, you have to treat that uh, cause. If it's a myoclonus, then you have to treat the, treat the myoclonus. If it's a jugular tumor, you have to treat the jugular tumor. If it is due to heterosclerosis, then you have, you have to do some uh, treatment regarding that. But when so treatment of the cause is most important and depends upon whether the subject tinnitus is troublesome or non troublesome. If the patient, uh, as I said, we give them we give them a questionnaire to answer, and after that, if the according to the scores given by the patient, as it's a self filled questionnaire, right? So we are not forcing him. He he is answering according to his symptoms. So if it is not troublesome, not much troublesome, then we can what we can do is we can give him some counseling and we can give him a re reassurance that see it's not a bigger problem. You can uh, overcome it. Just uh, just feel that you are quite normal. You can just counsel him. So reassurance to the patient and counseling is done when it is not troublesome. And conservative treatment can also be given, such as. Um, as ischemia is also one of the cause of the tinnitus, as we can give some vasodilators, uh, as we used to give for uh, vertigo, right? Uh, due to in vertigo, also we used to give vasodilators, sedatives. So the, we can also give the same condition, same uh, drugs to uh, this condition as uh, as we used to give in menias. So conservative treatments such as vasodilators, sedatives, vitamins and tranquilizers. And sometimes tokenide is the latest drug used for treatment. Tokenide, zinc therapy is also given. Carbamazepine because some of the patients are due to the psychogenic causes, right? So carbam and antidepressants, clonazepam and ginkgo biloba has also been used. So all these are conservative treatment: vasodilators, sedatives, vitamins, tranquilizers, tokenide, zinc therapy, carbamazepine, clonazepam and zepam and ginkgo biloba. Then comes the surgical treatment. Uh, when you uh, understood that it is due to some menial disease, then you do an endolymphatic sac decompression. When uh, you understood that due to the, there is some trauma, due to, there is some inflammation of the inner ear, then you can also give intradympatic injection of alcohol or steroid. Cochlear hair cells are distorted, then you can do cryotherapy for cochlear destruction. Cochlear nerve section if no hearing. If there's not, if it is a non-serviceable ear, if it, the patient has no auditory inputs from the ear, then there is no point keeping in that. So you can directly remove the cochlear now. So that will also help in your relieving the tinnitus. So these are the some of the surgical treatments. And if the presbycusis is the cause of tinnitus, then what you do is hearing improvement. You have to prescribe the patient a hearing aid, which improvises and gives psychological effect as patient believes tinnitus to be cause of hearing loss. So hearing aid. 
you can also use some tinnitus maskers such as continuous complete or partial inhibitory or desensitized there are some uh, products available in the market the, they will mask the tinnitus and if no cause is found these are quite helpful such as putting a, a ticking alarm clock close to head or a very light soothing sound or music of radio through a headphone just to make the noise which may be disturbing the sleep means uh, some of the patients will only have problem while sleeping when the the surrounding environment is very calm so what you can do is some ambient uh, some as the surrounding is very calm you just uh, try to provide some um, noise like you can uh, keep a wall um, previously we used to have some um, wall clocks uh, bed, uh, bedtime clocks right so you can uh, keep it alarm clocks you can keep it near the ear means uh, aside your bed and then tuck tuck that the sound will be coming from that so that will uh, help him means that sound will be perceived by the uh, auditor you know rather than by the uh, rather than that uh, tinnitus sound or you can also keep it as a, a small radio at a small voice volume or um, earphones using some music so that will also help him and psychological treatment of tinnitus includes the following cognitive therapy relaxation training therapy and biofeed so all these all these are some of the psychological treatment of tinnitus okay so uh, this was this is the topic tinnitus most probably you won't be asked much questions from this but uh, you just need to remember only few points mostly the causes are important and treatment part is important nothing much so i hope you have understood the topic a brief uh, briefly i will tell tinnitus is abnormal perception of sound it is usually uh, usually unilateral and it is observed more uh, while the surrounding is calm subject to an objective tinnitus subjective is only the patient will hear objective is when examiner can also hear when the amplification is done significantly these are the various causes there are, we have categorized into seven the first one is due to the changes in the cochlear hair cells the second is physical distortion of the cochlea third one is disorders of cns fourth one is due to changes in the sound conduction fifth is vascular causes sixth is muscle contraction and seventh is the psychogenic cause generally the middle ear tinnitus is, tinnitus is low pitched inner ear is tinnitus is high pitched pulse style tinnitus is seen in asom barotrauma and glomus tumor so this is the cycle of the psychogenic uh, causes of tinnitus so some of the causes of the object tinnitus is a patellar pattern tube stenosis patellus myoclonus glomus jugular venous hum and av malformations etiopathology is unclear but you need to remember only two points uh, it can be due to deprivation of the input or abnormal input from the ear and how to explain that neural plasticity and changes in the neural input can uh, is the explanation for the uh, tinnitus that is change in the nuclei of the ascending auditory pathways or redirection of the auditory input to the extra auditory pathways so these are some of the causes uh, pathology, pathology how do you investigate we do a lot of investigations to rule out various causes of the tinnitus radiologically treatment is if it's not troublesome you will uh, counsel the patient and give reassurance and give the conservative treatment surgical treatment we have discussed four types hearing aid can also be used tinnitus maskers can be used and psychological treatment so this is the topic so that so that was the class today and uh, if you have any doubts or if you have want to repeat uh, want some repeat of any other any topics kindly note it down and please make a list of the topics uh, which i have covered and just compare it with your textbooks if any of the topic is left please let us know by tomorrow evening so that we can prepare for the next classes and uh, or else we'll start with the surgical topics and then we'll follow it with up with uh, revision so class uh, prakash and all if you, if you uh, kindly inquire all of your friends and if any topic any of the topic is left please let us know then we will uh, teach accordingly if everyone has marked your attendance then we uh, i'm closing or uh, i'm closing the class okay thank you so much if no uh, some of you have not marked then please mark it now i'll be i'm closing it